Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. This tank was made about four months ago, and it was meant to grow spike rush. That is a type of sedge, it's kind of like a grass, and I found out through uh, my experiments that this will grow underwater. So uh, we've been running with it for years now, but this is one of the first jar aquariums I built specifically to grow spike rush. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to help me out and you want to see more content. I make a new video every week. Sometimes I squeeze in a little extra video here and there. And I'm always happy to share with you guys. So today we're going to do an update and we're going to jump right in right now. All right, guys. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the tank from the surface with the lid removed. And I'd like to apologize for the shaky nature of the video to start with. Uh, I was all hyped up off watching some uh, mecha anime right before this. But the spike rush looks great. The duckweed looks good too. And uh, this is a, a nice pond in a jar. I'm surprised. It looks really nice in here. And I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the tank is nice and green and very, very overgrown. <laughs> it looks great. Uh, now, looking at the tank itself, um, you might see a reflection from my lamp and maybe even a little bit of a uh, reflection from the camera there. Um, the, the spike rush has grown so dense that it's actually pretty dark in this tank, and I had to struggle a little bit with the lighting here. Uh, but I'm happy with it. It looks pretty good. Um, as far as uh, problems go, uh, having too many plants is a pretty good problem. And the tank might be a little bit dusty. Uh, that's fine. It has been sitting on a shelf for like four months now. And uh, I don't use any kind of like Windex or anything. You know, I just wipe them off here and there. Uh, but we have a chunk of cucumber in here. I just fed this tank recently. And uh, yeah, you know, all of my jars, they are fed with cucumber slices. Um, some tanks, I'm actually feeding bananas, but that's a whole different story. So here we can see some of our bladder snails. There's only a few in here, and I expected, uh, you know, quite a few. Uh, but we have a couple, and uh, they're breeding, they're eating, and they're alive, so that's fine. Uh, I would like more bladder snails, of course, <laughs> uh, but we'll take what we can get. You can see some uh, cucumber seeds floating around in the tank and at the very bottom as well. Um, that's remnants from the previous uh, slices of cucumber that I have fed to this tank. And uh, those seeds, they will not germinate underwater. And uh, I don't worry about them too much. Kind of uh, interesting to me, like a record of all the food that this tank has consumed. And later in the video, we might even see some creatures attempting to eat the cucumber slices. So that's pretty interesting. Now looking a little closer, you can see uh, some small bladder snails here. Uh, again, we don't have any large adults, which is uh, quite strange. I think that it was a combination of the lid um, kind of containing the uh, atmosphere, like an ecosphere, uh, like keeping it sealed up and reducing the amount of oxygen in the tank, which has ultimately, uh, you know, reduced the number of creatures that we can host in here. Um, but I, I think there's another cause of uh, the lack of bladder snails in this tank as well. Uh, which is uh, something we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Uh, but if you look closely at that hole up there in the middle or the left of the uh, frame here, you can see like a, a direct hole right through the cucumber slice. And uh, yeah, that's due to our paramecium and our bladder snails in here. Uh, just constantly munching away, grinding up this cucumber, and turning it into more biomass. Uh, turning it into more bladder snails, and paramecium. We have some ostracods in here as well, and uh, we love our ostracods, but this tank has developed in a very interesting way. We have tons of spike rush in here. The plants have done amazing. I am overjoyed. Uh, as far as experiments go, this shows that spike rush is a great candidate for jar aquariums. Apparently, you can grow it very easily, and uh, it can grow uh, really robust and dense in a tank like this. This jar is about a half gallon. And I will, of course, include links to the build video in the description. But zooming out a little bit, you can get a better idea of uh, exactly what's going on here. I am probably overfeeding this tank, uh, but that's fine. You know, if nothing else, the extra food is encouraging our bladder snails to breed as well as our paramecium and our ostracods and our other pets inside. 
uh, but it's very green, and I think the cucumber looks interesting as it is right now until it uh, disappears and gets eaten up by all of our pets inside. Good to keep in mind that this tank has been running for about four months now, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it as it is, but we're going to look a little closer. Uh, there you can see the paramecium really well. Uh, they are definitely in here. We don't have the extremely dense numbers that we have in our other tanks, but that's fine. You know, each one of these jar aquariums, um, they're all unique and different from one another. And I just think it's pretty cool that the paramecium are concentrating on this little chunk, this little hole in the middle here. Uh, again, with the shaky video, I was trying to get them in focus, um, but they're so small, it's, it's pretty hard to uh, zoom in on them. I am looking into buying some better uh, video equipment and even a microphone, uh, but I gotta be honest guys, I don't have a lot of disposable income, so if you would like to donate some proceeds towards the channel, I will happily accept them and immediately put it towards more uh, aquarium materials and uh, video stuff, you know, to make the videos better. Uh, but here with the macro lens, you can see uh, a little bit better what's going on. The spike rush is everywhere. <laughs> And our creatures are happily munching away on this cucumber slice. You can, of course, use fish food flakes or other food items as well. I just prefer cucumbers because you don't have to cook them or, you know, anything like that. You can just slice up a cucumber, drop a piece in, and uh, your snails and your other pets will uh, be very happy and uh, content. Here's a good look at a bladder snail. Uh, they're pretty small in this tank, and I think I know why. Um... Yeah, we might have something, actually, uh, eating the bladder snails. Now, if you know me, uh, you know I love my snails, and I don't want to see anything eating them or hurting them in any way. Um, but they are kind of like livestock. You know, these are my cows. They are my, my farm animals here that I'm raising, um, specifically for their ability to produce uh, nutrients for the plants. It turns out that snail waste is uh, like three or four times more fertile than worm castings, which is pretty interesting. Um, but, you know, they're also quite useful in their own way. Oh, he's surfing on a seed now. That's pretty cool. Uh, but the bladder snails, they uh, have completely eliminated any algae in here, along with the spike rush. Uh, we have no algae in this tank. It's, uh, it's very clean, actually. The glass is pristine and it's very clear. Um, I never clean these tanks. I don't do water changes. I don't have any kind of filtration or uh, no bubblers or anything like that. Um, all of these jars are all natural, um, just like a real pond off in the woods somewhere. You know, it just happens to be small and contained in a jar. And uh, I look at them kind of like a model or like an example of what a pond, you know, what happens in a pond. If you're uh, some kid doing like a science project or something, I highly suggest something like this. It's a lot of fun and you can show the full life cycle of some of these small creatures in here uh, without investing too much money into the project or, you know, spending a whole lot of time doing maintenance and all that kind of stuff. These jar aquariums are a lot of fun just to sit back and watch. And uh, I keep them all on my windowsill. Uh, I give them indirect sunlight and uh, that's all you really need to do. Add a little water if it evaporates and, you know, run with it. The spike rush here, it looks a lot like pine needles. And I think that's pretty cool. It's growing into uh, something like a forest or uh, like a, a bush or a, just a, a dense shrub, uh, you know, uh, scrub forest area. Uh, here's a look at the lower portion of the aquarium. This was originally titled the DIY Lava Rock Aquarium. So uh, there is some lava rock in here, and it is a uh, Wallstad-style tank, uh, meaning that uh, it has soil underneath sand, and uh, that allows the plants to uh, you know, grow really well and to harvest all of these nutrients. And it turns out that a fair number of our creatures can actually consume the soil that we put in here. So uh, altogether, you know, the Wallstad method works really well for these jar aquariums. And uh, yeah, we don't have very many, uh, any kind of debris really on the uh, lava rock. It's very clean. And I chalk that up to my creatures, you know, just doing a good job of keeping everything, uh, you know, nice and clean. Uh, we have quite a few detritivores, which are uh, animals that eat 
dirt and debris. And uh, it shows. The tank is very nice and clean. We don't have any large uh, earthworms or anything in here, but we do have a very surprising uh, number of pets that uh, you're about to see here in just a moment. Uh, this tank reminds me of Christmas for some reason. I guess it's the red and the greens together. Uh, it just feels all Christmassy inside. But uh, looking back at the surface now with our macro lens, you can see some of the snails there still eating the cucumber. Totally oblivious to me filming them. They don't know. They don't care. They want food and they want to breed and that's about it. So I'm pretty happy with that. But if you look closely there at that branch of spike rush, you're going to see a lot of little dots. Little dark dots there. And um, we've seen these before. I know what they are. Uh, but I could not tell you what species or, you know, what uh, family they are in. Um, I do know that they are water mites, though. They are related to arachnids. They are actually arachnids. Um, they're related to spiders and ticks and things like that. Uh, but they seem to roost on plants near the surface or just above the surface. And uh, they're very interesting, tiny little creatures. We're going to zoom in a little bit here and see if we can get a better look at them. There we go. Yeah, these are our water mites. They are little eight-legged arachnid creatures. And uh, you can see them there just at the top of the frame. Uh, they're very active in this tank, though. Uh, when we've seen them elsewhere, they have been very static and uh, very slow-moving. But here they're crawling all over the place. They're moving everywhere. Uh, they're exploring. And I can't say for sure what they eat. Um, but uh, my research has shown that they are probably parasitic. And they tend to uh, attach themselves to things like, uh, you know, uh, mosquito larvae and insect larva. Now, of course, in this model aquarium, we don't have any uh, larvae of any kind, but we do have bladder snails. So I believe that the uh, young water mites are actually feeding on the bladder snails, and that may be acting as a population control method. Because we have quite a few uh, water mites in here, along with some detritus worms and other creatures that you may see. Uh, but the water mites seem to be dominating the tank. And uh, that's very interesting. This has become the spike rush and water mite aquarium. They're even attacking a cucumber seed over there, which is entirely unexpected. You know, I don't know for sure what they eat. I'm just uh, making a theory here and a hypothesis. But they're definitely all over that cucumber seed, which is very interesting. They seem to like the plants, and um, that's the only place you'll see them in the tank, is roosting on the plants. Here's a better view, even further uh, zoomed in. You can see their legs, and they, uh, they do resemble a tick or a spider, and they are related to them. There's even a copepod swimming by there. Uh, but these, these mites are so cool to me. Um, I did not expect to see so many of them in this tank, and they are somewhat hard to notice without uh, a proper lens or the ability to zoom in. But there they are. Yes, they're very active in here, and uh, I hope that that audio isn't coming through. Uh, my neighbors are always out here doing stupid stuff. Uh, motorcycles, meh, all kinds of things. But, uh, yeah, they're, uh, <clears throat> the water mites are doing extremely well in here, and um, I hazard to say that they're doing uh, better here than in any of my other projects. We have seen water mites in sealed ecospheres and uh, quite a few other places, but never so active or in such dense numbers. I had to re-record um, this uh, voice over here because the uh, audio in the Swamp Shack where I filmed this, um, it just was not very good. So right now I'm sitting uh, in a little contained area and I hope that my voice sounds a little better in here. And we have, of course, our bladder snails cruising by. I didn't see any footage of the snails um, being bothered by the water mites at all. I haven't seen any evidence that they were harming the snails. So I can't say for sure, you know, that the, they caused the snails to dwindle in numbers. I'm really not sure um, what's going on with the bladder snail population in this tank. 
Uh, but that's okay. You know, part of the fun with these jar aquariums, um, it's learning. It's uh, watching and learning. And then, uh, you know, of course, I run off and I do some some research and I learn some things about these creatures. Um, there are so many different species of water mite out there in the world. Um, something like 50,000 different types. So I could never give you like the Latin name or a proper description of them. Uh, all we can do is observe and, uh, you know, come up with different ideas as to what might be happening here. Uh, but this tank is beautiful inside and we've grown what is essentially a spike rush forest inhabited by a number of different tiny creatures. Part of the charm with these jar aquariums is the uh, just the, the tiny animals that live within them. And you have to keep in mind that I have captured all of these species and I have brought them home and I have uh, got them to breed and increase their own numbers. Um, these aren't things that I just scooped out of the wild, you know, these are my pets. These are, uh, you know, things that I have loving, lovingly raised one way or another. And uh, yeah, it's just, it makes me very happy to see them doing so well. As a kid, I, uh, I loved Pokemon. I'm a kid, you know, I'm from the 90s. Uh, I was born in 87. Uh, but, you know, I grew up in the 90s. So uh, it just makes me so happy to uh, do this stuff in real life. You know, I had no idea as a young man um, that you could uh, get into a hobby like this. And uh, to have this, this whole world here just sitting on your windowsill. This video may be a bit long than I originally intended. Uh, a bit longer than I originally intended, but that's fine. And uh, a few of you will sit and watch the video with me, and most won't, but that's fine, you know, we're not too worried about it. They say that uh, I should make content that I want to watch, and that's what we're doing. You know, I want to see things like this. I love looking at the tanks and seeing all of this activity, and it, it's something like a, like a National Geographic show, you know, right here at my fingertips in a world that we built together and uh, it's just awesome guys i want to thank everyone so much we had something like 83 watch hours um, last month and we've got like 25 new subscribers and uh, y'all are the best i love you guys um i appreciate all the attention and all the time that you spend with my videos uh there may be some negative comments here and there but um that's going to happen anywhere on the internet so i'm not too worried about it Overall, though, uh, I love the tank. I love the channel, and uh, I'm just so happy that we're still doing this, you know. This is like two years or three years into Bucket Ponds, and here we are. You know, we're making more videos than ever. And uh, here's another look. Just at the spike rush itself, we might have a little bit of Nutella macroalgae in here, but it's hard to differentiate between that and the spike rush as it is. They both grow in long green strings, so uh, either way, I'm happy to have the tank doing so well. And we're going to look at the back of the jar now. Here is the Spike Rush Forest. Now this is the side of the tank that faces the window, so it makes sense that we have the most growth here. I also planted most of the Spike Rush on this back wall, so uh, it shows. The tank has grown so dense. Um, this is why it's so dark inside as well. Uh, there's just so much spike rush in here. Now, I can happily say that we can harvest spike rush for use in future projects very easily um, from this tank. Uh, that's another, uh, not the main goal, but uh, that's another goal of these jar aquariums is to uh, set up little farms so we can grow these plants see what works, and then harvest some to use in other projects. I will, of course, um, be setting up an ecosphere soon using some of these materials that we've grown right here on camera, and I'm pretty proud of that. Here's another look. Um, you can see all of the water mites in here. There are hundreds of them all over the spike rush. So uh, my theory may or may not be correct about the snails, the spike rush, um, it seems to be hosting these water mites, and uh, they might even be feeding on the plants. I don't know. They are mysterious little creatures, and I definitely need some kind of a microscope to uh, properly um, observe them. 
but we do know that there are hundreds of them in this tank, and they are all over the spike rush for whatever reason, and that's pretty cool. Um, overall, this project is a huge success, and uh, I'm very happy with it. We set this up, um, I said in January at first, but this was actually built at the very end of 2021. So this tank is closer to five months old. Uh, but I wanted to be honest, you know, we started building the recent wave of jar aquariums uh, this year in 2022. And I wanted the uh, title in the video to reflect that. So here's a uh, another look at the tank as a whole. You know, we have quite a bit of activity in here. And it's very green and uh, very dense inside. It's also very clean in here. And uh, nice and neat and tidy. Uh... Overall, this tank is just beautiful, and I'm so happy with it. Now, I will have a new build video for you uh, next Friday, probably next Saturday, to be honest. Um, I'm going pretty hard at my day job, and uh, I don't always have the energy to come home and start filming right away and start editing. Um, but you can help pull me away from that day job just by liking and subscribing uh, the channel. It helps a lot keeps me motivated, and uh, it's always nice to know that there are other people out there. So, uh, you know, to sum it up, I feed this jar with one slice of cucumber about once a week, and I may need to uh, step that down a bit. We have no filtration, we have no filter, we have no aeration, meaning that we have no bubbler, no air pump, nothing like that. I don't add any chemicals to this tank, I don't change water, I never add fertilizer, nothing of that nature. Um, everything that we put in there to start with, and uh, just cucumber slices. Um, as water evaporates, I do add a little fresh water here and there, just to top it up. But otherwise, these projects are maintenance-free. Now, I could come in here and cut out some of the spike rush, and we may do that in a future video, um, specifically for an ecosphere that I plan on setting up. And, yeah. Uh, remember guys, we're going to be alternating in the coming weeks. Um, next week I'll do a build video, and then the week after that we'll do an update on one of the older tanks. And I just want to show you that, you know, when I build a project, it's meant to last. We're not one of those channels where we just throw some stuff together, uh, we get a million views for whatever reason, and then they dump the tank out and they just forget about it. Nope. We build something, we throw an update video out there, just so you know, uh, it's still running. And I'm still happy to share it with you. So please like and subscribe. This is Bucket Ponds. My name's Terry. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.